now we can go back and take a quick look at how to create a bar chart to display these differences. Now, one thing that we might want with bar chart is error bars, but it turns out that the error bars that SPSS gives you in a repeated measures design are not correct. So they're going to assume that the data come from different groups, which is not true in this case since this is a repeated measures or within subjects design. So we need to do a little finagling. It's kind of annoying, um, but there's a few steps that we have to take before we can get error bars that will display appropriately. If you don't do these steps, then you're going to get, get error bars that are bigger than they should be, and that's actually going to make your results look less significant than they are. So we have to do a few things. First we have to create a new variable, again using transform compute variable, and instead of difference I'm going to hit reset to clear that out. We're actually going to take the mean, we can call the variable mean, and we're going to take the mean of the pretest and post test. So for every person we're going to get the average of their scores, the average of their pretest and post test scores. So we got to go down and find uh, mean. So if you go to this function group and choose statistical, you'll see mean down here. Choose that and move it up using this arrow. And then we're going to put pretest and post test in here. So if we choose pretest and move it over, and then you need that comma in between them, take post test and move it over. And so this is going to essentially take the average of their two scores. Hit OK and the output window will pop up letting you know that it's done that and now we see the mean here. So for example person 2 had a 0.4 for the pretest, a 0.6 for the post-test and so their mean is 0.5 halfway between the two. Okay so now what we need to do, so this is step 2, is get the mean of this column here. So you could refer to this as a grand mean and so we just need to get the mean of that variable go to Analyze, Descriptive Statistics, Frequencies, going to reset, and we're going to just move the mean over and all we care about here is the mean itself. So it's a little confusing, it's the mean of a column of means, so it's a grand mean. It's what was the average score for everybody across the entire study. Hit Continue, and OK, and we just get point 9438. So we're going to want to write that down. Okay. We're going to minimize that. Okay, so our next step is to create an adjustment variable, which is how much higher or lower a person's mean was compared to the grand mean. So was this person getting more right on these pretest and post-test scores uh, than the average across the whole study? Transform compute. Clear this out by hitting reset and we'll create a variable called adjustment. And we're going to take um, the mean that we got from the last step, the grand mean, which is 0.9438, and subtract mean score. So everybody's score is going to be subtracted by that. So if uh, somebody had a higher score than average, then um, we'll see that um, they're going to actually have a negative score here, so their adjustment is down. Um, these steps, you don't have to spend much time thinking about what it means. The basic idea is that we're just adjusting the error bars to account for the fact that um, people are in both the pretest and the post-test, and so we're taking away individual differences from the error. Um, so we've got this adjustment, and now the last thing that we need to do is create variables for the pretest and the post-test that take into account this adjustment. So a couple more things that we need to do. Uh, we need a pretest adjusted. We can call it pretest ADJ, and we're going to essentially take the, the pretest and add the adjustment. So plus adjustment, and then minimize, and then we're going to go back and do the same thing, transform compute, and we can just change this from pretest to post test. And there's a post test adjustment score that we're creating now. I know this is sort of tedious and, and uh, kind of annoying, um, but this is what we need to do to get the error bars to be accurate. So now we've got these pretest and post-test adjustment scores, and now we can finally go ahead and get our graph. Go to graphs, 
chart builder. You have all sorts of graphs here. We're going to do a bar graph. So you can either double click this or click and drag it up to this display area. Now if all you wanted to do was show the two bars without the error bars, then you could have just used the pretest and post-test scores and skipped the whole rigmarole with the um, adjustments. But since we do want error bars and we want them to show up properly, we're going to select pretest and use the shift key to highlight post-test at the same time and then click and drag it over to the y-axis. This is not intuitive, so if you've never done this before, you might never figure out that that's what has to happen. So you're going to see that red plus and then release. It's going to show us this pop-up that tells us essentially that it is um, going to do what we want. We want one bar for the pretest and one bar for the post-test. Go ahead and hit OK. So we want error bars. We need to click that. 95% confidence intervals is probably just about right. Make sure you hit apply or else they won't show up. Um, and this is now a good time to make sure that our x-axis and y-axis labels are what we want them to be. So if you click on x-axis, you'll see that right now it's not going to give us one, which is definitely bad form. Um, so if we just put time to refer to pretest versus post-test, that's probably fine. We can also switch the order here if we want to. Click apply. Now go over to axis, y-axis. And right now it's going to be mean, which is sort of generic and unhelpful. So if we just add the word knowledge, mean knowledge score, it's a little more descriptive, and click apply. Now we're ready to see our finished product. Go ahead and hit OK. And there we go. You can see the pretest and the post-test. You can change these um, because that's not probably what you want them to, to be here. Um, if you just double click, uh, then you're going to get a chart editor where you can do a lot of um, adjusting of things. Uh, for example, you can change, if you double click here, then you're going to be able to change what that text looks like or even the size of it, because oftentimes in SPSS these are a little smaller than they probably should be. You can get rid of the gray background. Um, you can click on the error bars and get rid of that. So lots of things that you can change. Uh, that's for another video, but you have your graph now and you can see that the error bars almost overlap there. That is reflective of the fact that our p-value is almost exactly at 0.05. So that's about it. Um, thanks for watching. Hope you found it helpful.